Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I want to share with you guys a very interesting topic that I have had many times uh, with people and that is that people that own firearms are never going to let their children starve to death. Okay, so uh, this is a very basic but important concept that has uh, uh, many far reaching repercussions okay um you know i, I want to kind of break down into it because a lot of, and the people that i'm typically having this conversation with are usually pro-gun people uh you know maybe they've received some gun training from me uh but they had just haven't gotten around to purchasing guns uh and again it might be just because of money concerns or storage concerns or you know, uh, you know, permitting concerns because of where they live. Uh, so they, they just haven't gotten around to purchasing the guns. Um, and the thing that I, I like to make them aware of, okay, is that if you ever have a serious uh, disruption in society, okay, uh, if the people that have guns are most likely going to be the ones that are fed first, okay, uh, and think about that if you put that into perspective right uh, let's assume that you are the person in charge of the food supply okay and then you've got uh, two different groups of people coming to you one group that is unarmed and the other group that is armed which group are you gonna feed first okay you're gonna feed the group that's armed okay um, now this doesn't imply that they would do anything immoral uh, but the fact that they have the capacity, the ability uh, to basically take what they want means that you're going to feed those people first and make sure that they're happy and their bellies are full before you worry about dealing with the people that are unarmed. Okay, so, so again, this has, this has far-reaching uh, repercussions. Now, in the cities, what especially cities like cities like New York City just because I grew up in New York City um, I have I'm very familiar with the setup over there most the vast majority of the population over there does not have guns so what that means is that in a apocalyptic type of situation uh, there's gonna be very little food coming into that city okay so it's gonna be very uh, it's gonna be very scarce and uh, the people the, you know when the food does whatever food does get into the city uh the places where the food is stored uh is probably going to be is probably going to receive a high level of security right and who are they going to call in for to guard the food well nypd right they're going to call in the police department to protect the food so what do you think the police department is going to do over there they're going to feed themselves first okay and you know only if there's anything left or if they know that there's more food coming in are they going to try and feed the rest of the population so that is the reality of if you live in a place like new york city um where only the you know only the elite right the p police class have arms they are going to feed themselves first okay uh now who's the second tier right who's the next group of people that they are most likely going to feed uh most likely the gangbangers right the people that have uh that do have guns or are a real threat to them uh that's probably the next group of people that they're going to feed and um i would use the 2020 riots as an example um you see how police pretty much got out of the way and they let the the rioters in the uh, um, you know, in certain neighborhoods kind of do whatever they want. Um, well, to me, it, that like one way of looking at it is that like they gave them wide clearance. They gave them respect. They said, "Hey, you know, you we know you guys over there are equally dangerous as us, so we're gonna let you guys do." whatever you want because the same way we can hurt you you can hurt us okay so that is most likely going to be the second class of, of people uh that is going to be fed okay and then who and then basically the uh the rest of the population well if there's anything left they're going to be fed last okay so uh, simply the fact that they have they don't have the ability 
to take what they want means that they don't get anything. Right? Only when you have the ability, all right, or you pose a real threat, um, is there are, are you treated equal? Okay, so. That's how I kind of read the situation in the cities, okay? Now, let's look at the situation outside of the cities. Now, mind you, the food basically travels from outside of the cities into the cities, and it's important to understand that the, the food is going to become very scarce in the cities uh, because the food supply is going to be interrupted. The food trucks are not going to get to the cities because the people outside the cities are going to have first dibs okay so whatever foods in the cities that's all they're going to get that's what they have to live off of. now outside the cities where the food is actually created and of course there will be in there will be an interruption in the food supply um because in our modern day society with the billions upon billions of people that we have around the globe um i think something like eight billion up at this point or something um basically the only way we can feed these type of populations is with industrialized food production okay so if there's any breakdown in industrialized food production there's not going to be enough food to go around and the example that i like to use is uh when i the, the parents i'm sorry the town that my parents grew up in right uh my father was a child a small child during world war ii okay um in his town, even though there were Germans invading the countryside, there was no interruption in the food supply because, because basically people were still farming through traditional means with animals, okay? So they weren't dependent on diesel. So during World War II, unless there was a war actually happening in your town and it was getting bombed and getting shot up uh people just went about their business as usual so 200 miles away they could have been a major war going on or even 100 miles away but in town where my parents grew up that didn't happen so their experience of world war ii was like it really didn't happen to them they were children at that point uh you know, they, maybe it's, I think my father said he had seen soldiers pass through town, uh, German soldiers pass through town, but that was his whole World War II experience because the war didn't actually happen in his town. Uh, the fighting didn't actually happen in his town. Um, and they grew their own food independently without, re without relying on diesel. Uh, so they didn't even really know that there was a war going on, okay? Uh, by contrast today, all farming is dependent on diesel so if there's any interruption in the fuel supply farmers are going to be are going to starve just as fast as anybody else okay so only the amount of food that has been produced uh, that's basically the only food that is going to be available for for division now of course the, the warehouses with food stores are going to be outside the city uh, and they normally need to be trucked into the city so the people in the countryside are not going to let those trucks leave to go to the cities if they think that they're that, that there's that, that not that not that not just that they're starving at the moment but if they think that in the future there might be some food shortages well they're going to want to stockpile okay so they're not going to let the food leave to go to the cities even if they at the moment they have plenty of food okay so that's one of the reasons why the cities are going to starve now the people in the cities who think that they're going to be able to get out of the cities first problem they can, they're going to run into is with no fuel going into the cities they're not going to get too far you're going to have cars running out of fuel on the highways which is going to create roadblocks um, so right there is going to be a uh, uh, travel concern but secondly even if that wasn't an issue the people outside the cities are going to block the highways so people in the cities can't get out of the cities. Okay, so uh, that said, let's look at the situation, the likely situation of the people outside the cities. So outside the cities, the police do not have a monopoly on guns. Okay? Uh, so that means that they have to respect the population. They can't just seize the food and say, hey, you know, this is ours and we're just going to take what we need and give out whatever we feel like giving out because you know people are going to get very desperate and and like i said at the beginning of the video nobody with children is going to nobody that has children and guns is going to let their children starve okay so the the governments the local governments they would have to deal with that and they would have to be a little bit more fair with the distribution of the food okay uh so 
going back to the topic of this video is that the topic of the video is that basically nobody is going to uh, allow nobody with, with has guns and children are going to allow their children to starve to death well uh, going a step beyond that you we can also say that um, uh, that armed people are always going to be fed first um, just as a matter of necessity uh, by the rulers right the the, the rulers uh, they want to stay safe, okay? They want to. They're going to want to take the course that is going to be the safest to, the, to them, and the course that's going to be the safest to them uh, is going to be to feed the armed people first, uh, and then the unarmed people. Well, you know that's that's uh, that's not much of a priority, okay? So I just wanted to share some some stuff for you guys. Again, it's just food for thought. Um, discuss it amongst yourselves in the comment section and I will talk to you all soon.